What's up, kids? It's Caleb here from Game Glyph, and it's October. So for October, we're going to be looking at horror games for a multitude of systems. In this video, we're going to be looking at horror games, or at least horror-themed games, for the Sega Genesis. Here are six horror-themed games for Sega Genesis. Let me know what you think of these games in the comments, and by all means, please list some games that are some of your favorite horror-themed games, or games you like to play around Halloween on the Sega Genesis. Do so in the comments below. Check it out. Ghostbusters for Sega Genesis. This game looks like it's got all the ingredients to be a pretty good game. It's got a good theme. It's based on one of my favorite movies that I always watch around Halloween. And look, you've got all the Ghostbusters. Wait a minute. Where's Winston? Winston's not even in this game. God, that is so racist. This is Ghostbusters for the Sega Genesis. And as you can see with your own two eyeballs, it is not a very good game. It's got that little body, big head, super deformed game style like Wayne's World that I just really do not even care for. I don't know why they wanted to make this game that way. I guess for some reason they thought it would appeal to kids or at least be safer. This is just a standard action platformer. Nothing special here at all. I mean, yeah, it's Ghostbusters themed. You kind of get to look like the Ghostbusters when you do it. But this game is not good. The music's bad. Gameplay's bad. The controls are fine. It's just not very much fun to play, and I expect a lot more out of the Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters don't really shoot. It doesn't really need to be a run and gun. It needs to be Ghostbusting. You need to be tracking these things down and finding ghosts. And uh, When did Metroids become even a part of, of the Ghostbusters canon? I, I don't even know. So this game is not good at all. Do not play Ghostbusters on Sega Genesis. So I'm always trying to find new horror-themed games, especially around this time of year. And Sega Genesis has a lot of games that could be kind of horror-themed, but this is Ghost Hunter, a Japanese-only game for Sega Genesis. And this game, I guess, is kind of a, a loose basis for the theme of this video. In this game, you play some, some random character, and basically it looks like you're trying to destroy balls with your jizz. That's about the only thing I can surmise in this game, and then, you know, you die and you explode, and then you start all the way back over again. This game is not very much fun, nor would I recommend seeking this out through some kind of ROM library. I don't know where this game came from other than Japan, but uh, I'm not really seeing the ghost hunting vibe here. Maybe I just can't get past this first damn level, and I don't know, like that thing next to the candle looks pretty phallic, and why is corn coming out of that thing? I don't know what's happening. Decap Attack on Sega Genesis. This game is actually good. This is Decap Attack starring Chuck D. Head. And this is finally an actually horror themed game. Look at all these weird little horror themed graphics like that little Frankenstein and that weird looking scientist. Actually that scientist is way creepier looking than that Igor Frankenstein monster kind of like guy. So basically in this game you're trying to stop this evil king from the underworld from taking over the surface world. In this game you star as Chuck D. Head. Lots of puns going around here. And you launch your head from your stomach at enemies. It's an action platform with lots of items to pick up, good music, good controls. In my opinion, good graphics for an early Sega Genesis game. This game really was never touched on again, and it could. They could remake this game now, and it would be like a lot of fun. I love the style of this game and the graphics. It's very detailed, good parallax scrolling, really smooth frame rate. There's a lot of different items and pickups you can get in this game. And it's easy to die in this game, and you kind of get a forward running momentum once you start going, so you can run into enemies really pretty easy. But I like all the skulls and the trees and just the overall theme of this game. It's got a weird mechanic as far as like the actual attack of the character because it kind of comes from his stomach. I guess his head is in his stomach. I don't know if he ate his own head or, or what. But there's a lot of mechanics in this game that go over really well. A lot of levels, things to explore. Again, good graphics, good sound. I would highly recommend playing Decap Attack. So far, this is the most and only recommended game on this list. So it's only going to get better from here, kids. Decap Attack on Sega Genesis. This game is ahead of the curb. Ghouls and Ghost. Sega Genesis got its own version of the Capcom classic Ghost and Goblins called Ghouls and Ghost. And this is a little bit different of a game than the one on Super Nintendo and the regular Nintendo. In this game, you can actually shoot up, which is kind of nice. But overall, it's pretty much the exact same game. A little bit harder, some people say. But I always enjoyed this game, and I'm not even going to lie to you, I never even came close to beating this game. I play it for a while until I get completely frustrated, and then I stop playing it and probably break a controller or two. But it's actually a good game, great graphics, great sound, great music, very much feeling some Halloween vibe 
vibes playing this game. This is not my favorite version of the game, but it's close. Still my favorite version of this game is the one on Super Nintendo. It's got the double jump. It's got a little bit better graphics, a little bit better music, but this game is fun in its own right, and it's kind of like its own thing, its own version. And also, being able to shoot up is pretty nice, and I don't mean that any other way. Ghouls and Ghosts for Sega Genesis. It's ghoulish. It's fun. Now we're talking about some real horror here. This is Splatterhouse 3 on Sega Genesis. This game is really good, and I'm super late to the game with this game. I never actually played this as a kid. I could never find a copy of it. I'd go to the video store, it was always rented out, never got a chance to play it. I think the guy that rented it out just kept it and never let anybody else play it, and I lived in a small town, so you know, there wasn't a lot of choices. This game was also really expensive, and my parents would not let me play it. But Splatterhouse 3, out of all the Splatterhouse games I've played thus far, has been my favorite. This game you play is basically a Jason Voorhees looking clone, and you smash the crap out out of beast into green goo. There's nothing more Halloween themed than that. This game weirdly has some strange exposition, which is a theme I, I touch on a lot in, in my videos, is exposition. But this game actually has some almost FMV style storybook moments here. And this game is really creepy. Like there's some really creepy usage of words and the, the little sequences between levels is pretty scary. So in this game, you're supposed to rescue your girlfriend, I assume, and you put on this mask and it gives you like these super evil demon powers and you squish all these little monsters into little bloody pulps. This game's very violent, very graphic for an early Sega Genesis game, but I would definitely recommend it. It's got some good action, and it's really neat how in this game you kind of get to choose your own direction that you go in. You go into a room, you beat up the monsters, and then there's like a number of doors that open up, and you try to get to the end and fight the boss. And it's pretty fun. I really enjoyed this game, and every time I capture footage for this game, I always end up playing it for a lot longer than I expect to. Splatterhouse 3, definitely a good game. Well, here it is, kids. This is one of my favorite games in Sega Genesis, and it absolutely is a very much horror theme game. It's got Dracula, it's got werewolves, it's got Sahagans, it's got all kinds of ghouls and monsters. This is Castlevania Bloodlines for Sega Genesis. This is one of the greatest games ever made, and this is absolutely one of the best Castlevanias ever made. In my opinion, this is way better than Super Castlevania 4 for the Super Nintendo. Castlevania Bloodlines has better graphics, better action, better music, better gameplay. Overall, it is the best 16-bit Castlevania game of all time. This game is also very violent for a Castlevania game, and it definitely kind of ushered in the new ways of violence that you'd see in games like Symphony of the Night. Lots of gore, lots of splatter. This is a fun game with perfect controls, some of the best music of all time, great use of color, and absolutely fantastic gameplay. Castlevania Bloodlines is a must play for any Sega Genesis enthusiast, and any fan of Castlevania that hasn't played this game definitely should. And what's cool about this one, the first one that I ever played, where the main character doesn't have to have a whip. You can choose between two characters, and I always go with the guy with the spear, Mr. Eric. He's got a spear, he can jump really high, you can get wall meat. I play this game again and again, and I never get tired of it. I've beat this game probably a dozen times, and it's definitely a must-play game for this time of year, and I would highly recommend getting your Castlevania on with Castlevania Bloodlines for Sega Genesis. There's not really much more you can say about this game. It's pretty well applauded, and it's definitely worth all the hype. Check out Castlevania Bloodlines for Sega Genesis. Well, that's it for this episode of the Month of Horror on Game Glyph. And this was a look at some really good, or some really good, Sega Genesis horror-related or themed games. If you like these games, let me know in the comments below. If you haven't subscribed, by all means, please subscribe. Until next time, kids, we'll see you again soon. Bye! <laughs>